Good morning, everyone, and greetings from the great state of Georgia. And this morning, real briefly, just would like to give my uh, uh, opinion about the recent uh, announcement of the death of Charles Manson. And just real briefly, just want to um, touch on, on why Charles Manson is the perfect example and the poster boy of why every state should enforce the death penalty and should have the death penalty and why capital punishment is justified. Uh, Charles Manson was basically planet Earth's real life version of the Joker. You know, and I'm not talking about, you know, old Batman, that Joker. I'm talking about Heath Ledger Joker. Because this man was, in, he was a lunatic and he was insane and he was a cold-blooded killer. And this man right here basically laughed and scorned and mocked the judicial system and the California penal system every single day that he was incarcerated in prison. And he was, you know, he was in prison for almost 50 years. You know, for the murderers of Tate LaBianca, he was in prison a lot before that, you know, and in and out of reformatory when he was young and all that. But, in other words, he was a repeat offender. You know, if, uh, you know, you would enforce justice like you're supposed to, then other people wouldn't have to suffer because of the system's stupidity. And their stupidity is this, that they would let a man like Charles Manson lay up in their prisons at taxpayer ticket, the taxpayer footing the bill for almost 50 years. 50 years this guy was in prison for just heinous and evil crimes. And the fact that he didn't actually kill nobody is irrelevant. But for Charles Manson, these people would not have been killed. You know, he had these uh, people in the family and his cult brainwashed. And he was the one that put all this in motion. Uh, he was the mastermind. Uh, in other words, Hitler didn't actually probably kill anybody, but was Hitler responsible for the deaths of lots of people? Yeah, kind of like that. Okay, so Charles Manson is the perfect example of why we should have the death penalty. And here's why, they, here's why the death penalty is justified. And here's why it's moral. It's the right thing to do. Okay, Lady Justice. You've seen the statue of Lady Justice. You know, she's blind, meaning she's, bl you know, uh, judge, 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 judgment is blind. And... You know, she's holding these scales. You know, she's holding those scales. In other words, the picture here is this. You know, justice shows no partiality. It is not a respect of persons like God. Not a respecter of persons according to your wealth or poverty or whatever. Now, we know things always don't work out that way. But here's the way that things should work out. Justice should be impartial. And uh, the scales represent this. The scales represent... A balancing of justice. In other words, whatever is taken, that is what is owed. If a life is taken, then a life is owed. In other words, if you take someone's life, then your life should be taken. Not your freedom. You know, that's different because, you know, you can lay up in prison for 50 years like Charles Manson proved, and you can still breathe. You can still eat. You can still lift your weights. You can still, still surf your internet. You can still read. You know, um, you can do all these things that your victims aren't getting to do anymore. And so, therefore, that's why it's justified. Because as a man soweth, that shall he reap. You know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And a lot of people say, well, you know, uh, Jesus, he said to forgive. And absolutely, forgive your enemies and love your enemies. And he was talking about on a personal level. You know, in, in other words, if somebody walks up to me and sins against me and, and slaps me, then, you know, I'm to forgive them. And we're talking about it on a personal level. But as far as the letter of the law, on a general level, you know, and in the, the justice system, the letter of the law knows no mercy, and it shouldn't, because you have to set that example. And the death penalty, not only should it be enforced, but it should be enforced swiftly. And I got two examples I want to give to you. Number one is Polly Class's murderer. You remember Polly Class out in California? Uh, her murderer uh, abducted her from her home. She was like 12 or 13 years old. She was having a sleepover with her, with her little friends. And she was kidnapped out of her own home, taken off somewhere, raped, and killed. Her murderer, right now, to this day, as of this, the time I'm filming this, November 20th, 2017, he's still on death row in California. And he'll probably never be put to death. Uh, and this man, you know, he said things in front of the camera, laughing and joking and mocking and even said that Polly said that her dad molested her. And I think he was just saying that to be a smart aleck. But in other words, this man does not fear the system. And if he does not fear the system and he, he does not fear punishment, then what are other murderers like him? They're just like that. you know. So if they don't fear the system or fear punishment, 
they're not going to think twice about going out and killing somebody because they know all they'll get is they'll get to lay up in prison for their whole life. And Charles Manson loved prison. He loved prison. He even said many times he belonged in prison, and he did. But he loved it. It was no kind of punishment to him whatsoever. Oh, by the way, while this man was in prison, uh, he basically got to have his own cult. I mean, I'm not talking about followers following him and all that. I'm talking about he had a cult of personality. He, uh, he was greatly admired. He was famous. People wear t-shirts of him, put posters of him on their wall. In other words, this man is not looked down upon. Think of uh, the characters in Natural Born Killers. You know, he was more famous than he was really, you know, looked down upon. But, yeah, Polly Class's murderer, who's on death row right now, should be put to death. He shouldn't get to live 50 years on death row like Charles Manson did. And the second, murder, the second murderer is a man by the name of, I believe, Alejandro Avila. Uh, he was the murderer of Samantha Runyon. Samantha Runyon, back in 2002, was a little five- or six-year-old girl. She was playing a little board game on the sidewalk with her friends, and this guy just drives up and asks about a dog missing. And then the next thing you know, he, lifts, he, he scoops little Samantha up and takes her off somewhere and rapes her and kills her, strangles her, and then wraps her body up in a rug and throws her off to the side of the road. You know, and it was proved by DNA that this man did it. So he should be put to death. It's, you know, especially when there's DNA involved, the person should be put to death. And But he's on the California death row system right now, laying up on taxpayer ticket, three square meals a day, you know, comfortable setting, free health care, free health care, and basically laughing and mocking at the system just like Charles Manson was. Maybe not verbally, maybe not, you know, publicly, but, you know, in their minds, that's what these people are doing because they don't mind death row. They don't mind prison. But the Bible says this, you know, that what a man sows, that shall he also reap. And if you take a life, your life should be given. It also said, thou shalt not kill. And why do you kill them? Yes, you give them a chance to make things right with God. Absolutely. But then you give them to God. And they will not do that anymore to a person. And I want to uh, say one more thing about another murderer. And this one was in Texas. Now, now check this out. This man, uh, whose name was uh, J.R. McDuff, I, I believe his name was, J.R. McDuff, in Texas, he was on death row. On death row. And he got paroled while he was on death row. Now, how a guy on death row gets paroled, I have no idea. What in the world's going on in Texas? But this guy got paroled, and this is like the 80s, I believe. And after he got paroled, shortly thereafter, uh, he and this other guy was driving around late one night, and they saw this woman at a car wash. And it was like maybe 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that. But she was by herself at a car wash, washing her car. And they pull up to the side, and they kidnap her, and they take her off somewhere way out in the country. And J.R. McDuff brutally and viciously raped and killed this woman. The guy that was with him, said that he will never forget her scream. See, she was screaming to the top of her lungs while J.R. McDuff was beating her, beating her with his fist. And this was a big guy, big guy, beating her with his fist as hard as he could and raping her. And the guy that was with him said he would never forget her scream. She was screaming as loud as she could. And he ultimately got caught, and he was sentenced to death for that murder. Yes, he was sentenced to death for that murder. But... Why was a man that was already on death row got paroled so he could get right back out and do it again? If the man would have been put to death to begin with, that woman would may probably still be alive today. And her murder, her murder would have never happened. Now, that's why we should have the death penalty because it is just, it is moral, and it is the right thing to do. And Charles Manson is the perfect example of that. This man basically got away with murder because he was never punished for it. In prison, he loved prison. He loved it. You know, like a, think a pig in mud. You know, that, that's basically what it was for Charles Manson in prison. And so, okay, that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, death penalty, capital punishment, justified, unjustified? I believe it's very justified, and Charles Manson is the perfect example of that. So thanks for watching my video. You have a good day, and God bless.